Yeah, hey, Matt. Hey, Noob. How did Travion grow the most as a player this year, do you feel like? Um, you know, I, I would think just, uh, you know, reacting to some struggles in the first half and, and, and being really good in the second half when we needed him. I think that was probably, even though you could kind of look at that either way, you know, he, he still responded. It seemed like that was actually our trend. You know, he would get in foul trouble or struggle in the first half, and then he would respond and just have, you know, great second halves. And, um, you know, <clears throat> you want consistency is, is what you want. He's a, he's a way more consistent player um, than he was. He still has his times where, you know, I think like a lot of big guys, they get into foul trouble, they get away from some of the things that they've had success with. And um, – but down the stretch – um, you know, especially after those first four or five conference games, you know, he had about a five or six game stretch there where he would just was, you know, he, he was great in the last four or five minutes of the game. And I think, I think just, you know, wanting to, you know, come through for his team in, in those moments has probably been his biggest jump. Your program has earned a pretty good reputation for developing big guys. Obviously, the results kind of speak for themselves. How how much a part of that has always having that other guy to push the first guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. How important was yeah. Zach in that sense? Well, it's, it's very important because obviously Zach's played to finish a couple games here in the past, you know, two weeks, and rightfully so. You know, he's, he's played better than him in those stretches. And that's where I think just being forthright and honest with guys right away, if we have a reserve who's played better than the guy who's starting – you know, down the stretch, those, those guys are going to get a chance to play more because they've earned the right to. And you always make decisions as a coach what's best for your team. And mm -hmm. that's what really has helped us is that, you know, we've had guys, you know, finish games that start a lot and play a lot. And we've had guys finish games that, that come off the bench. But that competitiveness between uh, Zach and Travion has helped both of them. You know, no different than it helped, you know, Isaac and A.J. Hammonds or – Isaac and uh, Caleb Swan again. <clears throat> Anytime you can have a couple guys, you know, on your front line that you can go to, um, that that competitive nature every single day in practice really helps guys develop, and it also helps guys develop. We've gotten a lot of credit for our big guys, but um, you know, we've had some pretty good guards. Um, we, we really just try to maximize guys that have a either a, a skill set that's tough to deal with or just a matchup that's tough to deal with. We, we, we go to those matchups a lot, or we go to that, those actions a right. lot of feel we're going to have success. When you go back to when you recruited Zach, not when you first got him on campus, but when you recruited him, are you shocked by the kind of season he had? Well, he jumped classes. And so I think that's something that's different for me, <clears throat> even though Swanigan did it, I haven't had a lot of experience of guys because you get the opportunity to watch them. Then you get the opportunity to, you know, after they commit, they, you know, or sign. Now they have their season. Then like when they're juniors, like you, you've watched. Them. And so for him, when he jumped to right. class or whatever, we didn't get a chance to watch him as much as we would say somebody who was in high school in those settings for four years. So I think that's a little bit different, but um, he, he definitely made improvements to start. You can see right away um, the improvements, especially from the first couple games, he had good games, but he also turned the ball over. Um, he got in foul trouble. And then after five or six games, that kind of, you know, it went away uh, to where he wasn't getting in that kind of foul trouble that was self-inflicted. Um, he was taking care of the basketball. His decision making is a lot better. Um, but just trying to keep things simple and, and give him simple rules to when, you know, guys double from different directions or, you know, they, they triple team, whatever it might be. Uh, there, there's a lot of different variables that go with it when people give him attention and, and how to handle it. So we've just tried to, put that into drills and, and, and get a lot of reps and, and go from there. But no, he, he made a, a lot of strides throughout the year. Right. You guys are in the NCAA tournament. Your seed's probably pretty secure. Um, outside of always wanting to win, outside of obviously having an opportunity to win a championship here, what do you want your team to be, to be motivated by going into the Big Ten tournament? I don't know if I want them to be motivated. Obviously, if you're a competitive person, you want to win the game in front of you. Um, you know, just trying to get better more than anything, make improvement. I didn't think once again we were very good defensively against Indiana. You know, anytime you play somebody twice and you're not very good defensively and you win, you know, you, do, you need to feel fortunate. We had 15 turnovers against Indiana. You know, that 
you know, that's way too high of a number. So we got to get better. So I, I think that's what we're driving to do is, is, is keep getting better with each practice and keep getting better with each game. Has there been any sort of roundabout advantage to the weird conditions about this season when coaching a young team? You know, when you have them in timeouts, all they can really pay attention to is you probably because there's, there's nothing to look at in the crowd. You don't have family at, at the team hotel. You don't have – they're not around the student body as much. Were there less distractions this year or were there more distractions this year? Um, I don't know if distractions is the right word. I think they have to go through more because mm-hmm. um, you can't really be a regular student. You just have to go back to your, you know, your apartment or your house or your dorm. And, you know, and so I think it was just – it was so different. You know, and obviously when you're younger, you don't know any different, but you, you, know, you still are used to, you know, socializing with other people and, and just being a regular teenager. And I don't think they've had the opportunity to do that, nor has anybody else, whether you play sport or you don't. Um, so I think that was the, the difference. I don't know if the distractions, I, I, I understand your point, but, um, you know, sometimes those things aren't distractions, even though sometimes they are. So, um, we just made the, we just made the most of it. And, um, just tried to get out ahead of some of those issues and uh, try to get them ready for each game. Yeah. Cause I, you know, both the big 10 tournament and the NCAA tournament, if not both uh, continuously, you're, you're going to be in a true bubble. Is that a yeah. good deal from a coaching perspective? You feel like that it's just I don't, attention to the coach or have yeah. you thought about that at all? No, not really. It's not that big a deal. So that's what we're used to. We've done it for four months. And that's what we keep doing. So even though we weren't technically in a bubble when we traveled, we were in a bubble. Right. Like guys weren't, you know, leaving right. the hotel. Right. And, uh, you know, we kept things pretty simple. Yeah, you've obviously never played basketball in Lucas Oil before. Uh, you have played in some some football venues before. Generally speaking, is there any kind of adjustment to that or anything like that? Or No, just, you know, like anybody else, it's going to be the same. Um, you know, your opponent's going to have the same goals to shoot on, the same venue. Um, get the same time to practice and uh, shoot on it. And so that's what you want. You want to be able to get in there and get adjusted and, and play, but it's, I don't think it's that big a deal. Will you have a chance to shoot around there? Yeah. Yes. I'm good. Thanks, Matt. All right. Thank you. Mike? Yeah, just a couple, Matt. I mean, you, you talked about, you know, you got to improve the turnovers or cut them down. You know, defensively, you got to take some strides. But why – why is this team riding this five-game winning streak? Why do you have this momentum right now? What's going right for you guys? Um, well, there's a lot of things. You know, I think for the most part, um, we have a pretty deep team. I think our, our depth has grown, and we've had a lot of different guys step up and, and play well in the stretch. And even when other guys have struggled, you know, we've had somebody in that position step up and play well. I know you talked about how good Travion's been for us and how good Zach's been for us. But like Aaron Wheeler has, has really played well here in like the last two, three weeks and, and really gave us, you know, gave us a spark. Isaiah Thompson's done some really good things, you know, for us off the bench. It's been a hard adjustment, I think, for Brandon Newman, but <clears throat> he's rebounded the ball. He made a big three the other night in the game. And, uh, and so that adjustment to get to the bench, but, um, you know, we get Ethan back. And, and so when you look at our guys, you know, that, that come off the bench and, and that, you know, that play for us, like, you know, those guys are pretty good players. And I think that depth has been able to grow through Eric and Jaden's injury, through Sasha having his pause, and other guys have got more of a chance to play. And other guys have gotten more of a chance to play just because they've played well. Like Aaron play, has played more because he's played well. You know, Zach has played more because he's played well. And sometimes when you come off the bench, you don't get the same opportunity as the other guy. And that's, that's a little unfair, you know, it's, you know, but it's not, you know, it's not always equal. That, that, that's, that's part of being in competition, but if you keep fighting and you keep a good attitude, things work out for you. And, you know, for you know, our guys, things have really worked out for them. And, and just one other thing, I mean, you talked about how good Zach has been for Travion, but how good has Travion been for Zach um, just through practices and stuff to, to push him like Zach is pushing Travion. No, no question, because they both have different strengths. And, and so whether you get on the perimeter, you're in the post, or you're getting doubled, you get different looks. You know, both of those guys give such a different look, but they, they also, you know, hold each other accountable in practice, uh, you know, by playing hard. We break up a lot 
not a lot, but when we break up, you know, post perimeter, I'd say it's probably 25% of our practice, if not a little bit more at this stage, you know, those guys are down there by themselves. And I don't think those guards quite realize if they were just in a group of two people, like how many reps they actually get, you know, whether that's post, you know, post double passing or one-on-one -on -one in the post or ball screen defense, you know, if you work at it and you, you know, put your mind to it, you're going to make improvements. If you're just trying to get through it, you're not, you're not going to, you know, you know, you're not going to get much better that way. But if somebody's there and he's going hard, you know, you're holding the other guy accountable. I think that's what they've been able to do. But I think that's how it is in competition. You know, if you get guys that, that care, that go hard in practice, you know, you're getting yourself better, but you're holding other people accountable, which is a good thing. Thank you. No problem. Olivia, I see your hand up. Go ahead, please. Coach, I figured there was nobody better than you to answer this, but I know you're in tournament mode, but when you take a step back and, and look at this thing from, you know, a homegrown Hoosier standpoint, someone that has spent their whole life here, what can this do for the future of, of high school basketball in this state, the future of college basketball in the state of Indiana? By having the tournament here? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's a cool thing. Obviously, it's a unique circumstance with the pandemic and everything that, you know, we, we've had to go through um, to get to this point. But, you know, it's, you know, anybody growing up in the state of Indiana, playing high school basketball in the state of Indiana, wanting to get into the tournament is, is a big deal. When I grew up, it was, you know, one class. And, and that was a big deal. And, and today, it's, it's still a big deal. It's a little different um, from that standpoint. But just to have young people and, you know, fans in our state to be able to, you know, kind of be, you know, to embrace the fact that we have March Madness going to be in Indianapolis the whole time. It's pretty cool. And I think it'll be uh, even more so as, as we were, you know, we reflect back and say, you know, like, you know, we were able to get this. It would, what stinks is that you can't go and go to the games. And obviously that's the dilemma. Um, if you could, then I think this would be like unbelievable, you know, for the city of Indianapolis in, you know, in the state of Indiana, it's still going to be, but it's just, obviously it's anybody that asks you like, you know, how is it, you know, you're like, well, it's, it started four months ago. So it's, it's no big deal anymore, but it is different. There's no question. It's different when you're, you're playing and you don't have that many fans in the crowd, if any at all. Awesome. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Anyone else for Matt? Uh, um, yes. Yes. Matt? Yes. Yes. Uh, Okay, so it's been 106 days since you guys started this season. And I'm wondering how much of a mental health challenge has this season been, especially for young guys who are, yeah. you know, you know, just how and how have you addressed it? Because it's, it can't be easy. Right. Well, we've just, you know, tried to, you know, talk to our guys. And as, it, as it's, you know, as it's gone on, um, you get used to it. it it's not – something that's as big as deals that it used to, you know, used to be, you know, two to three months ago. Um, you just, you just kind of get used to it. We've had so many young guys play. And, and, and so for them, they don't know any different when you're a freshman and you've never played before. So this is, this is their norm. The other guys that have played, you know, before, like they know the difference, you know, especially, you know, with crowds and noise and, and things of that nature. But, you know, from a mental health you know, standpoint, you just make sure that they have everything and that you're talking to them. We've had a lot of, you know, guys really work on their games and put in, put in a lot of extra time, watch a lot of film. And in those times that they're around, just trying to talk to them just to make sure everything is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some competitive guys. And so, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to see past your own nose. Like, you know, you want, you want to play and you want to play all the time, but it's also, you know, people are going to have to sacrifice in a team sport, especially when you're playing nine to 10 guys on your roster. But for the most part, like, you know, maybe we're an outlier. It's, it's been really good. You know, our, our guys have been really good. They've done a great job sacrificing and, and they all feel like they're, they're in a pretty good place. But even if we didn't have a pandemic, there's always some things um, that you have to be able to have a relationship with your guys and make sure, you know, you know, what's going on in their lives and, and, and some of the pressures, uh, whether that's, you know, depression or anxiety or, you know, things of that nature that are very common in, in, in all human behavior, it really comes out in competition, especially if you struggle a little bit. So you just got to make sure that they got two feet on the ground, um, you know, take a deep breath 
and, uh, you know, just kind of work through some of your issues when it comes to competition, because it's hard. It, everybody comes to play. And now mm-hmm. you, you go through this where there's no other outlets. You just got to go back to your apartment. So you, you just have to be cognizant of that and, and just try to help your guys. So just to follow up real quickly, do people really understand the sacrifices that you all have, you know, especially the players have made this season? I don't think so. You know, I, I always talk about it with when people kind of generalize players in general, they don't understand like the commitment that they have to make. It doesn't make them better than anybody. They just have a huge commitment. You know, people don't understand like the commitment, like a wrestler has to make, you know, to be good, to be competitive, to compete at a high level, to keep weight, to do their academics. You know, it's just a, you know, they don't understand that pressures that, that come with guys that are like, they've put everything into, you know, trying to compete and play. And when it doesn't happen right away, everybody always thinks something's wrong when it's hard, you know, it, it's hard, especially initially uh, to play at this level. Um, that's why you have to commend the players for the sacrifices that they've made um, because now they don't have the same outlets that they've had before. You know, they, they, they're really regulated to, you know, a schedule, and staying by that schedule, and uh, that's tough. But they've done a great job. Our players have done a great job, but I think um, you know, everybody across the country probably would say the same thing. Thanks. Yep. Alex? Uh, yeah, hey, Coach, how are you doing? Good. So if you can think back to March 11th of last year, um, do you remember your initial reaction to the Big Ten's announcement that there would be no fans um, at the conference tournament? Yes. it was. I, I thought we would wake up to it. And with that news and the fact that they, they still tried to move through the morning and people went to the games to play, that's what I was surprised about. I thought that was, you know, and then obviously, you know, the decision was made after people got to the, the arena and you know, we went to our shoot around. But yeah, it was um it was something you knew that was coming though, from what everything that was happening in the last two days. So um it, it was tough. You know, it's it ended a couple of our guys' career, but um, you know, it, it's for the people that had ended their careers, you know, that's who you felt for. Um, you feel for everybody, and you, know, you put a, you put in a lot of time. But you know, for the people like right there, like never played another game after that. That's you know that that, that stinks, and uh, that that was difficult. And uh, do you remember your reaction to Rudy Gobert initially testing positive and the NBA shutting down? I just I was aware that it happened, but like you know, you you just if they were canceling that and shutting it down, you knew like. Everybody else was not too far behind. That, that, that was kind of my reaction to it. You know, you just, you're, you're not as knowledgeable about it at that time as you are right now. I think that's the difference. You just don't know what's, you know, coming. And just one more question. Um, if you could think to just a day later on March 12th, um, where were you when the Big Ten tournaments and or the Big Ten and the NCAA initially canceled their tournaments? And what was your reaction to that? I was still there in Indianapolis. Um, I was seeing my mom and, um, you know, it wasn't anything that shocked me. I, I thought at that time that that's what would happen. Um, so my mom was in Indianapolis. She was in the hospital, so I went there. Okay, that's all I have. All right, thank you. Taylor? Hey, Coach. I, I just wanted to talk to you about Eric Hunter Jr. and just the transformation he's made from being the scorer that he is to stepping up as, as well as he has defensively this year, how important that's been with such a young team as – I guess technically he's extremely old on this team. And, and I know awards are just awards and it's people voting, um, but to not make that all defensive team, I yeah. was surprised and a lot of people were surprised. Just, you feel like he was snubbed and just, is he deserved everything he's been able to do this year? Yeah, that was, you know, I voted for, for defensive player of the year. I thought that was, um, you know, I, I thought, you know, whether he's the best defensive guard in the league or top two to three defensive players in our league. And the fact that he didn't make it really surprised me. Um, I thought all the people that made it were deserving, but that, that really surprised me. I, I thought he did a great job on Marcus Carr. He did a great job on Trice. I can go right down the line. Um, you know, he, he's been fabulous for us. He, he's been really good. And I, I didn't agree, um, you know, with that, but you look at us and you look at some of the struggles we've had, like, this isn't like one of those things. It's just been clean cut and we've been, you know, kicking people. Cause that's not, you know, been the case. Like we've had grinded out games, like we've been awful sometimes from three point land. We've been awful shooting the ball in the perimeter and we've had to grind it out and guard people and do things. And he was the leader of that. And that's how we've won games. Like we, we've had a couple games where we've really shot the ball well and we've executed, 
you know, or we've had some timely buckets late in the game. But for the most part, you know, it's, you know, we've been pretty resilient. We've played pretty hard. And, uh, you know, Eric's really led our charge from a defensive standpoint. And you know, I, I just didn't, like I said, I'm, I'm very biased, but I, I thought he was deserving um, of, of being on that team. I thought he's more than deserving to be on the team. I'm not trying to, you know, get him to be the last guy on that team. I thought he was one of the top two or three defensive players in our league. And, uh, but, you know, his team wins. You know, he's, he's been on winning teams. He's been on a Big Ten championship team. You know, he was able to, you know, really make some strides this year and help us. And even when things didn't go great for him offensively, he kept a good attitude. And uh, that's what you get judged on. You get judged on your teams and, you know, how you handle yourself and how you win. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.